This video will discuss the ideal gas equation, which we're familiar with from general chemistry, but will hopefully also introduce a few new concepts as well. So our ideal gas equation is that the pressure of a gas times its volume is equal to the number of moles of gas times the gas constant R times the temperature of that gas. So another way we can express that is using the quantity called the molar volume, V bar. So whenever we have a quantity and we put a bar over top of it, that just means we take that quantity and divide it by the number of moles of whatever substance we have. So the molar volume, V bar, is going to equal the volume divided by the number of moles. So once we've gotten our molar volume, our ideal gas equation now becomes PV bar equals RT. So if this equation is true, then the gas is said to behave ideally. So when do gases behave ideally? <clears throat> so as the pressure approaches zero for a gas, that means that the molar volume is going to be approaching infinity. So each particle is going to basically only be seeing itself, not interacting with other particles as its molar volume gets very, very large. So as pressure goes to zero, all gases are going to start behaving ideally. So since all gases behave ideally at a very low pressure, this is one way we can indicate the temperature of an ideal gas is to say that the temperature of an ideal gas is the limit as the pressure goes to zero of the pressure times the molar volume divided by the gas constant. Okay, so the next thing to keep in mind when working with the ideal gas equation, as with most things in thermodynamics, is that units are very important. So we don't want to do all our work correctly and then get tripped up by the units. And similarly, there are also going to be a lot of units and a lot of, and a lot of problems. So we want to work to make sure that we're getting the choice of units correct for all of our situations and converting between them appropriately. All right, so starting with the temperature, that's usually the most straightforward one. The temperature is always going to be in Kelvin. So we always want the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So to remind ourselves, 273.15 Kelvin is equal to zero degrees Celsius, and one Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius as far as change in temperature. So 100 Celsius will be 373.15 Kelvin, 20 Celsius will be 293, etc. And if we live in one of the two countries which still uses such units, that is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. But basically, whenever you get a temperature, the goal is to pretty much immediately convert that into Kelvin. Okay, next for pressure. So you might be familiar with the unit of pressure one atmosphere, which is about the uh, pressure of the atmosphere on Earth around sea level, which is 101,325 pascals. Pascal is the SI unit of temp SI unit of pressure. So pressure is force per unit area. So that's going to be newtons per meter squared. It's going to be one Pascal is one newton per meter squared, which is also equal to 1.01325 bar. So one bar is 10 to the fifth Pascals. Uh, typically in this course, we'll either be using Pascals or bar. So bar is kind of one bar is the kind of standard value of pressure. And that's also equal to, if you see this unit, 760 millimeters of mercury is one atmosphere. So there's your conversions there. <clears throat> For our gas constant, R, in SI units, that's equal to 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So energy per mole of particles per unit temperature. So the, in other units, you may have seen this is equal to 0 0.0821 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And R is also equal to the Boltzmann constant times Avogadro's number. So the Boltzmann constant being 1.3-ish times 10 to the minus 23rd, and the Avogadro's number being 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, the two of those together giving 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So the gas constant gives us things like the energy per mole of particles per, per unit temperature, whereas the Boltzmann constant is the energy per particle per unit temperature. All right, for volume, the SI unit for molar volume is going to be one meters cubed per mole. 
So sometimes you'll see meters, sometimes you'll see decimeters or centimeters cubed. Sometimes you'll see liters or milliliters or kiloliters. So we'll remind ourselves that one meter cubed is equal to a kiloliter. One decimeter cubed or one tenth of a meter cubed is equal to a liter. And one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed. So the three most common units there would be one meter cubed per mole equals 10 to the third liters cubed per mole, 1,000 liters per mole, which is equal to one million centimeters cubed per mole or 10 to the sixth milliliters per mole. So it just depends on the situation. You'll probably see all three of those. Just be very careful to interconvert to the correct one before multiplying it times pressure or volume or, by, or temperature, what have you. All right, finally, our volume. We notice if we keep the same pressure and temperature, the volume is going to be proportional to the number of particles. So the volume of our system is said to be an extensive property. It is proportional to the number of moles or the number of particles in that system. So extensive properties that we are going to look at pretty consistently in this class would be things like number of moles, number of particles, the total mass, total energy, and as we see these properties come up, enthalpy, entropy, free energy, all extensive properties. Whereas the V bar, the molar volume, that is independent of the number of moles because we've already divided by it. So the molar volume is said to be an intensive property. It does not depend on the number of particles. So an intensive property would be things like pressure, temperature, density, and molar volume and density are basically inverses of one another. All right, so that's our ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT. A gas is ideal if it obeys that equation. All gases obey that equation at sufficiently dilute pressures. And then we just have to make sure to watch our units for P, for V, for R, and for T.